All right. So to create a custom header or footer, you're going to make sure that you're logged into the site. And then from the dashboard, hover over the snow dashboard drop down there in the upper left hand corner and go to design options. That's gonna open up your design options window here. And then from that menu, you'll wanna select story page templates. This is These are all the new tools we rolled out in July. Uh, we talked in a previous webinar about how you can create custom sidebars. So that's in the middle column here. So if you wanna know about that, you can request that recording. But below the custom sidebars in the middle column, of the story page templates tab, you can create up to five custom headers and five custom footers. So the idea there might be that you've got a custom graphic for you know your pillar categories, news, sports, opinion, and then you wanna display that graphic and maybe some other elements when people view a story in that category rather than your basic header. Uh, your basic header, again, is what you see when you are logged on to your home page. So the header is everything that's above where your content begins. So in my case, it's this marquee element, uh, my social media icons, current date, search bar, my graphic header, and then my navigation menu. And that is all controlled in the site designer. Uh, we'll have some other design, design webinars coming up. If you want to learn a little more about how to customize that, we'll talk a little bit about it today. But if you want to know more about that in depth, keep an eye out for that specific webinar. So to create my custom one, I just click the Create a New Header Template button. And then I can give it a name. Let's call this one Webinar. And then I'll save all design options to fully create that. And then once I see that that's been saved, it is now created. So now I can design it. And so I do that in the site designer. All of your header options and footer options are available in this purple dropdown. Um, we don't have any recommendations. Uh, I guess, Deborah, what do you mean by recommendations for headers? While I wait for that to come through, all of your headers are available in this purple drop down here. So we, by default, it has opened up on my desktop header, just that main header on the site. But you can see in the drop down, I've also got my tablet header and mobile header, so you can customize what those look like. And then there are also now is by default the minimalist header which appears if you use either of the immersive templates, which are new that we rolled out this July. And once this loads here, so you notice when you open up an immersive story, there's no header. It gets right into the story and that image and the uh, color block takes up the full screen. However, if you scroll down and then back up, you get this here, which is what we call the minimalist header. It's just designed so that if your reader goes back up to the top of the site, they can click that header and get back to your homepage. So you do have some control over that, although you are limited to a single row. Um, yeah, so because this is new, Deborah, we don't have any uh, recommendations. I'll kind of talk through some ideas I've had about this, but uh, we don't have any anything to share from what we've seen other people do because this is totally new. So I'll just kind of talk through my ideas as I've been playing around. Uh, so yeah, the minimalist header. And again, every time you create a header, it has three formats, the desktop to be viewed on the computer, the tablet and the mobile view. So I've got my test, which existed before we started the webinar. And now I've got that webinar, the new header I created. So if I open that up, by default, it just pulls in the same settings that I've got for my uh, desktop header, just on the main site. 
but let's say I've got that unique graphic and I want to swap it out so that if I use this header, it's going to have a you know graphic that says news or opinion. So to do that, I can just go to the site header graphic element and any of these elements I can customize and adjust their settings by hovering over them and then clicking the gear icon that appears in the upper left corner. So if I do that on my graphic header here, I can just upload a new image and either upload it from my computer if that's where it currently lives. I've already got one in my media library that I'm going to select. And so then we've got our new graphic header. So we're just easily swapping that out here. You can also, you know, if uh, maybe I don't want the social media icons on a story page. So maybe I'll just delete that row. And then the marquee element, I can maybe, you know, if this is sports, instead of scrolling those breaking news headlines, I can have it scroll recent scores. Or if it's uh, my news page, maybe I'm just gonna scroll new headlines. So you've got, you know, you can adjust settings. You could also add other rows. So if I wanted something like, maybe I've got an ad uh, that, you know, an advertiser just wants to be on uh, the feature stories. You could set that up and have an ad display just on the stories set to use this uh, header and we'll get to how you can set it on those stories in just a moment. So I've made a couple changes to my header here. I'm glad to hear that you think this is cool. We think so too. We're excited to see what everybody does with it. All right, so I've got this new header saved. And so now I can apply it to a story. So if I, I'm just going to Rather than make a new story, I'm just going to select one of my existing stories here. Something that has some text in it. And in the new story editing interface, some of you may have noticed this already this year. As long as it's using the new Flex Pro options. And if it's using the full width single sidebar or dual sidebars template, uh, because again, those immersive ones are going to use that minimalist header. But then in the story design box, I can customize the header and footer. So I'll go ahead and apply the webinar header there. Again, just a reminder of what my basic header looks like. And if I just leave it to the default, this should be the one that gets pulled into all my stories. However, now that I've applied that webinar header, I've got the new graphic header that I replaced there. And then that breaking news ticker is now scrolling the 10 most recent headlines that were published on my site. So just kind of a, a nice different look for that. So you could easily swap out those graphic headers or if you want some elements to not appear on certain stories, you could certainly do that. So with five custom headers, uh, it's definitely feasible that you could make one for some of your you know, basic categories, have a news header, an opinion header, sports header, and you could easily apply that just by selecting that proper header there from the customized header and footer bar. So the footer, Overall, not a lot of people probably spend a lot of time thinking about their footer down here. However, one thought I had for one way that you might utilize a custom footer, I designed one for sports. And what that does is I update that and then I go to the story. I, apply, I set it to stick to the bottom. So that means that it's going to display on the bottom of the site regardless of um, whether I'm scrolled down to the bottom or not. It just brings that one row that I've set to stick up to the top. And I set it to scroll my recent scores. Uh, if I were to clean this up a little more, I'd probably change that label there. So that rather than say breaking news, it would say recent scores. And I feel this kind of has like an ESPN style feel to it, scrolling those recent scores along the bottom there. 
And looking at this site design overall, I'd probably not have two competing scrolling elements there. But again, if I set that footer to stick, it's just going to be there at the bottom. And then if I scroll all the way to the bottom there, then it will just kind of naturally settle into its natural position. And so again, I created that by going to my design options. And in the story page templates, I made a new footer template, named it sports, and then I saved it. Then it's available here in the site designer. I just have to scroll down to the footer area and then it's available. And again, just a reminder that every time you create a custom one, you've got the desktop, tablet, and mobile. So again, if you're swapping out the graphic header, don't forget to do it on both the tablet and mobile views as well. Otherwise, people will get a different graphic header when they're viewing the site on mobile, uh, unless you swap out that, that graphic element. But in this case, I've just got the marquees, the only thing I have there. And to get it to stick to the bottom the way I did was... I click the gear icon on the right, which allows you to edit the row styles. So here's uh, some, you know, a way I can kind of clean this up. I didn't really like that black that was extending along, you know, along the bottom there. I'd probably, I'll change that up to make it transparent here. But this is that uh, element I was talking about, that option I was talking about. I can fix the row to the bottom of the screen. And so that's how I got that scrolling news ticker there to stick to the bottom. And so if I had another row with maybe a graphic header down here or my uh, my site name, only the graphic, uh, only the marquee is going to scroll there. So I'll clean it up here a little bit too. Uh, change that label from breaking news to recent scores. Save that, and then now it's a little bit cleaner there. It says recent scores still sticking to the bottom. And if I scroll all the way down, now I've got that second row of my header that lives down here. And that's applied to my story by when I edit the story or when I create the story, selecting the custom header or footer I've created to apply in the customized header and footer option there. So again, you can create up to five custom headers, five custom footers, and then apply those to whatever stories where you would like to see them used. So we think this has some really cool really great potential and we're excited to see how you all use it. But that is how you can create and apply the custom headers and footers. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please go ahead and put those in the chat. But that's pretty much how you can create those with the new tools that we rolled out this July. If you uh, would like a copy of this webinar, again, please feel free to send us a support ticket. We'll be happy to get you that URL and passcode. Uh, I'm not sure how well Adobe Spark uh, plays with the new immersive. I've, we don't have Adobe Spark in our office, so that's something that, Deborah, I would say, maybe try plugging it in and then previewing and seeing how that looks. Uh, I Again, I'm not familiar at all with Adobe Spark, so I'm sorry, I can't speak to that. All right, so yeah, thanks for joining me today, everybody. And we look forward to seeing uh, custom headers and footers that you come up with. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here, but.